Podueva, a municipality in the very north of Kosovo. A group of charity workers prepare for the dedication of a new park built to honour the memory of loved ones lost 10 years ago in the war with Serbia. Manchester folk group the travelling band do all they can to raise awareness of the event, while others work against the clock to erect a peace banner due for unveiling later on. I, however, decided to take a guided tour around Podjeva with Mandy, a local lad involved with the peace park from the very beginning and my new best mate. Before the war, this train used to be the most important thing that people used to travel with it. But it all was before the war. But now, after war, the trains was broken down. The, her, the rail was stolen as well, so it doesn't work at all. I listen to a whole sky singing about traveling. Oh, this is your I am a good We can do them. He has two horses. Well, what, what do you do with your horses? There are so many proof of that these cats are going to kill it's so interesting yeah. work to do with horses, with his legs. Yes, he's doing your cat. All right, okay. I'll do it with Poulon. Okay, but I see that Katar is never going to be able to do it. I'm going to do it. What does he do with his horses? What's it? 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 Oh, you're, you're essentially a vet, like a, a horse doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, actually, the doctor, but he fixed the legs for, for horses by rain. By iron. All oh, right, okay. And, it, and you, these are your tools then for doing that? Yeah, he, he's saying that I have these classic tools. They look pretty vicious. They look yeah. like weapons. Yes. <laughs> I didn't seem too much of a two-way conversation. Yeah. Well, I think we need to go away. Yeah. Mandy, man, what, what was that about? <laughs> he explained his history. It didn't seem like a two-way yeah, conversation. He, he told us the history of his uh, career with horses, what he does, yeah. how he fix, he, how he fix uh, lacks of horses and these kind of things. <laughs> but he, he's he spoke too much. Yes, so I can tell. I couldn't it could catch have unloaded him. on you a little bit there. Yeah, didn't they? I couldn't catch him. <laughs> Every word. But my time. Hey, can you tell us a bit about this this tower then, Mandy? What I mean, it's as soon as you sort of come here, it's like such an imposing-looking building. It looks really like daunting. It's it seems quite. Bit, this is the most high building in all our town, yeah. Pompeo. Before it used to be as proud of our people who worked here, but then the history of this tower changed, especially in a war when Serbians used to stay on the top of it with snipers and and used to kill people who were walking around the town. Just randomly. Yeah. There are lots of stories about people who were shot it on their windows of houses where while they were just looking out they were shotted people wasn't allowed to walk as free people on the roads there were only a few hours in the morning and in the evening when people could ha have free walk yeah. otherwise they were all the time under pressure between living and death Later on that day, it was time to visit the family's own memorials to the loved ones who had been lost in the massacre in 1999. First, the Derici family.
then the memorial for the Borghese family, of which Saranda and her cousin Johona, her brothers Fatos, Geng and Liri are all members. So we're here, and I know you've been working like from the beginning, like with the, the Peace Park and and uh, and such as that. But it's it's mad, doesn't it? Because it's literally ten years ago to the day yeah. that a lot of this kind of uh, thing kind of happened. I mean, if, the people I still have like kind of really odd memories about. I mean, it was difficult because the kids that came to Manchester, like, yes. were very very young. Yes. And almost the kind of things you talk about, you know, when you think back as a kid. You don't yeah. quite remember some stuff, do you? It must be quite odd. I mean, what age were you, like, when, like, sort of ten years ago when all this was happening? Uh, I was... Half, I was 11, 12 years old. Yeah. When the... When the park... When the people from Manchester came and plans, planted to make a peace park in our, our town. Yeah. So that was really, really good news for all the children of our town because we didn't have enough space to play football to to have kind of drums for having fun but i've heard you're quite good at football as well then man yes no because obviously i know you're doing the the manchester run then is what you've done the manchester run oh yes I, after that i've been included with the manchester people in past in past 10 years working on the peace park yeah I was invited by them to take place on the Manchester Grey Run. Yeah. Two times. What time did you get? Because I've got to do it. I'm doing the run. This year. Yeah, yeah. What time Where? did you get? I'm pretty competitive, uh, you see. Uh, last year I run 10 keys for 45 minutes. 45 I, minutes. I think I had the best result that I have ever had. Really? Yeah. That's my first time as well, but I think I did well. So if I get under 45 minutes, can I call you? Definitely. Uh, Monday. <laughs> 44. 44. You, Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't think that you can beat me. No, you reckon? I, I, I was. I you was, do a lot of training, actually. I was to be on fair. my athlete time. That, that's yeah. why I had best results. So definitely, you won't be able to beat me. Well, let, let, let's see. That sounds let's like a challenge. A, let's make a deal. If you uh, beat yeah. me, right. I will make you a present. Right. Okay. And if um, I don't beat you. I'll have to make you a present then. Definitely. This yeah, but I'm going to beat you, so it doesn't matter. So that's fine. Let, let's see then until... Uh, I don't think we should talk about that anymore because it's getting vicious. Okay. Right. <laughs> Where should we go next then? What, what building do you want to, um, to hit? I would love to go next to the river. This is the river called Mopi. Yeah. Uh, Region of Podio, who became from 74 villages, is called old because of the this river that's called Lopi. So, by the other people of the other towns, we are known as uh, Lopi people because this river begins to 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 source in uh, in top of the villages of Podio, then comes down through Podoevo and it goes on the way to Pushina. Yeah. So this is one of the beauties that people here has. That's why our building lots of good houses and buildings and lots of nice bars across yeah. it. You said it was like a bit cleaner before. Oh it used to be very cleaned before but the 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 winter made it unclean. Right so it gets cleaned up again every, every Definitely. year? Definitely. Yeah, usually it gets clean on the summer. Yeah. And in the summer, I wish you could drink a coffee on these bars behind us. Definitely, you would enjoy the Looks the like times view, here yeah. because there are lots of really good moments. Yeah. On this side. It looks good, man. It looks definitely very good. Well, I felt much more acquainted with Podieva after that, but it was time to catch up with the travelling band. Rumour has it that they've managed to secure themselves a bit of radio time out of town. Uh, not till eight. <laughs> it's going to be a long time.
Okay, well here I'm in uh, Pristina, obviously the Kosovo capital, uh, situated about 30 to 40 minutes drive south of uh, Podjeva, where the park's been dedicated and uh, being built. In fact, if you can just sort of see behind me, that's actually the central library in Pristina, which was designed by a Kosovo student. Don't know if he passed or anything, no, I'm only joking. Obviously, it's a big source of, of pride in the city. And in fact, very interestingly, if you just look right over here, right next to it, is a former Serb church, which has obviously been left pretty pretty derelict and bombed out. And it's been kind of likened, people also have described it to us as like having a wound, uh, but like leaving the knife in. Obviously, for a lot of political reasons, they can't actually move it at the moment. Seems like quite an interesting piece there. The main reason, however, that we're in Pristina is obviously the travelling band that are going to a local radio station, Urban FM. Urban FM seem very fiercely proud of their independent status. They don't have any political leanings uh, one way or the other. And interestingly enough, they seem to have quite a fondness for Manchester as well. So we're going to go check that out. Catch you in a bit. I'm broke and I ain't got a dime. So if you come from Manchester, the place of uh, what we know, Joy Division, and uh, we talked earlier, uh, the factory records yeah. and the uh, Happy Mondays and whatever. And so, uh, what's the purpose of your coming here? We've been invited um, by Manchester Aid to Kosovo uh, initially to be part of a dedication event. While the boys spread there. the good word, I chatted to Urban FM founder Ados Rahadani about not just the difficulties in independent radio, but also the complications in developing outputs for culture in Kosovo in general. Yeah, I mean, we don't have lots of, you know, cultural things. Even government or different embassies doesn't spend money about, you know, culture. If you have something about politics, they maybe, I mean, they, they can give money, but, you know, yeah, culture is something like, you know, it's something for, for them, like, you know, talking about space shuttle, like, I mean, yeah. culture, we don't spend money, but, which is very bad, you know, yeah. because people doesn't have lots of, lots of things to do, especially you, they cannot actually um, travel without visa, they cannot not see lots of things, so it's, it's, I mean, Kosovo is still like, um, get a little bit, I don't know how to actually say it, so, right. yeah. Word certainly seemed to be spreading about the park, added to the fact that the Borgietsi children are quite well known in the region, having testified against war criminals in The Hague. With this dedication and courage, it wasn't surprising then that the president of Kosovo himself wanted to meet with them. Fatimir Sedju is only the second ever president of the Democratic Republic of Kosovo. Hailing from the same town as the Borgetsis themselves, he is a very popular figurehead and represents a nation which considers itself newborn and striving for recognition. Okay, we were just about to leave Pristina when we spotted this and when I asked uh, what it was, uh, I thought it was important to show you and obviously we've had a great day in Pristina, it's great to see how Kosovo is moving on. However, behind me outside uh, the parliament buildings here in Pristina are pictures of people who went missing during the war and in fact are indeed still missing 10 years on. In part three, I finally chat to Saranda and Johona about life in Manchester and why the Peace Park is so important to them. And the Peace Banner is revealed. Hopefully. <laughs>